What's going on guys, it's me Zimzel99 and just a few minutes ago I watched um, two videos one by Alex the Kaiju Fan and another by Ultraman Explain and what they had done was a Godzilla vs Ultraman video and they both brought up points that um, Ultraman, that the original Ultraman could beat the original Godzilla and I just thought to myself hmm and Alex had said, oh, people talk about it in the comments or whatever. And, um, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a video response, and I'm going to analyze both characters and just see what my own opinion is on the matter. So, stay tuned. Alright, yeah, so... Um, I watched both videos, um, I think both people, Ultraman Explain and Alex Gadget Fan, brought up some interesting points, and I will be doing this, um, in my analysis, I will be analyzing three different Godzillas. I will be analyzing the 1954 Godzilla, the original Godzilla, Godzilla Showa Godzilla, and Godzilla 2000. The reason I'm doing Godzilla 2000 is because Ultraman Explain and Alex Gadget Fan both stated that they were not sure of whether Godzilla had um, the super regeneration properties in the original Godzilla or in the earlier Godzilla films and that, that was something that was introduced in the Heisei films and later on obviously it was regenerated G1 in Godzilla 2000 and my own opinion on that is as stated it's believed that he had super regenerative powers in the original Godzilla and what I believe is that they said that the oxygen destroyer killed him and he should have regenerated from that I believe that the oxygen destroyer acted too quickly and as such it overrided the regeneration the re regeneration took time and even stated in Godzilla 2000 it took like a few like an hour or so to heal so I don't believe the regener regeneration of Godzilla is instant and as such it takes time however I do believe that since the oxygen destroyer was acting so rapidly and, and um, disintegrating the cells and then obviously the whole body that Godzilla just couldn't react to that and of course the original Godzilla died and we do see however Godzilla was able to heal and regenerate in Godzilla vs. Gigan and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla where Godzilla displayed wounds in both films and then came back fully regenerated we're not sure if he nursed those wounds or not however we can obviously most likely assume that he regenerated those wounds as he came back with no scarring of any sort and even in Godzilla vs. Hedera he completely regenerated um parts from those as well and if anyone wants to say that that is a different Godzilla that the Showa Godzilla that is the same Godzilla from 1955 all the way to 1975 that canonically is the same Godzilla as well as that's also the Godzilla that canonically fought Zone Fighter within the Showa continuity which I just recently learned that Zone Fighter is apparently canned into the continuity which is something I will get into which is quite interesting and um with Ultraman, of course, we're just talking about the base Ultraman. This is the Ultraman that we see Ultraman Hayata from the original Ultraman onwards. We will be not going into Ultraman later in the series because, of course, I, I believe that like base like Ultraman now versus like any movie version of Godzilla would absolutely obliterate Godzilla. But I do believe like any Godzilla from the comics, like the Marvel Godzilla or Godzilla and Hell Godzilla or any of the manga Godzillas could beat Ultraman in my opinion. However, we're just going based off the movies slash the Ultraman TV show. Um, also, when they stated that Godzilla 1954 was slow and that he's just a really slow lumbering dinosaur and he's slower than pretty much all the monsters in the Ultra series. Um, that's something I'd say I'd chalk up more to the idea that it is probably limitations of the suits and not really what the character was actually supposed to look like. I bet he was supposed to be kind of slow, but not as slow as he is compared to the other monsters in the, in the Ultraman series, because I think that just goes down to story convenience or inconsistencies because of limited resources and technology of the time. And I believe that probably early show Godzilla's movements are probably more akin to what the 94 Godzilla can move at its fastest. Because if we're to say that what we see in the Godzilla films is Godzilla's speed, then we have to take into account the fact that Godzilla or Gigantus from Godzilla Raids again when fighting Angris was moving incredibly fast. Like those movements were almost hard to pick up. And if we're to say that the Showa Godzilla could fight Ultraman at that speed, I'm not going to say that because that would make no sense because we obviously know that that's something outside of the film universe that is moving faster and I do not believe that Godzilla and Angus were fighting at that high of speeds because that would be pretty much impossible. And um, 
let's get more into their stats more specifically. We have the Godzilla, Godzilla 1954, not to mention the Show Godzilla, are both 20,000 tons, as opposed to Godzilla 2000 being 25,000 tons, with Godzilla 2000 obviously being 55 meters, while the original Showa and the 1954 being 50 meters, as opposed to Ultraman, which is 45 meters. However, in Ultraman Taro, in a narration, Ultraman Taro states that Ultraman was 53 meters, which I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say that's an inconsistency, and I'm not sure about that. I would like anyone who's seen Taro, like point that out to me just to make sure that I'm getting that right because I I can remember that someone had stated that in a narration of Taro they said that Ultraman was 53 meters tall. Um, but we'll just say that right now, of course, during the series he's 45 meters tall. Um, let's go over their abilities with Godzilla we have the Godzilla with his atomic breath and we with Showa Godzilla we have the atomic breath technically an early version of the nuclear pulse I'm not gonna include the magnetic bolt thing and I'm not gonna include the ability to fly and then for Ultraman we have the Specium Ray um, Flight at Mach 5, the Ultra Slash, his shield and catching rings and Let's obviously talk about um, the fact that both characters are using a form of radiation, Godzilla with um, thermonuclear radiation, as Ultraman explained put it, and Ultraman using specium energy, which is pure light energy. However, light is indeed a form of radiation. So, we do not know whether or not Godzilla could absorb radiation. However, Alex did bring up the point that Oraga was able to hit Godzilla, and he said knock him out for most of the film. He was not able to knock out Godzilla he was able to make Godzilla retreat however I'm gonna bring that up to blows which is something I will cover later but um we do see that Orga did use his um his beam his laser beam um Alex did say that it was solar powered we do know that the ship itself was solar powered we do not know if the ship was able to convert energy to perform some kind of other kind of energy because the beam that Orga ship shoots is not pure light energy because it moved, would have moved much faster and probably unlike like solar radiation how solar beams work I don't think that that's just pure solar radiation and we do see the beam had the strength to knock off some of Godzilla's skin not do that much damage however was able to knock him around a bit so we do know that Orga's beam does pack a lot of power behind it however if we were to look at Ultraman's Specium Ray his Spassium Ray doesn't hold that much strength behind it, however in later incarnations it is able to beam clash with other beams, similarly to Godzilla's Atomic Breath, and we do see Godzilla's Atomic Breath beam clash with uh, Mechagodzilla's uh, rainbow eye beams. So we both know that possibly both characters can beam clash, however we do not know specifically how much force is indeed behind both powers. We do know that Godzilla's atomic breath is able to propel himself off the ground, however I'm not going to say that he can fly or in this situation he would choose to fly. However, if we are to take that into consideration that he has the ability to push himself off the ground with his atomic breath, that is a few megatons of force, which it would be a lot. However, to Ultramans, we do know that the beam hits the target, it does not push the target back, but it just makes them explode. And with most monsters, it just blows them up instantly. I know Alex um, showed an image um, uh, from or, or video from Cry of the Mummy with um, Dodongo being blown up by the Specium Ray, and I'm also gonna make note that Dodongo was also injured and got it, um, both his eyes shot out and had taken some blunt force trauma from Ultraman. In that case, um, so we do know that Dodongo was injured before being blown up completely by the specium ray and like similarly to what i'll say as a comparison i'm not saying this is the case but with dragon ball z we do know that characters have their key which allows them to withstand certain levels of attack we um we know ultraman has something similar to this with his specium energy as he was able to repel strikes from naranga however alex did say that he was able to was able to um shrug off um an attack from naranga without much damage however with jiras he chose to avoid Jiris's Electro um, Ray, which is similar to Godzilla's Atomic Ray, as Ultraman Explained said. So, we do not know the extent of how much, like, what is the most powerful beam that Ultraman could take without being, like, completely destroyed or knocked over and taking excessive amounts of pain. However, we do know that Ultraman saw Jiris's Ray as something that would have taken it, would have hurt him enough that he needed to dodge it instead of taking it full force, like, 
Naranga, and he fought Naranga before Jiras, and we would have assumed that Ultraman would have been able to tank higher levels of attack the more the series went on. So that does raise a question of whether, and well, it does raise the question of whether or not Godzilla's atomic breath could hurt Ultraman. As indeed a lot of people will say that Jiris is a dumbed down version of Godzilla, which he is, as Jiris is just a mutant frilled lizard or a just a regular dinosaur that was living in the lake and just got really, really large. We're not sure where the electric electricity beam came from. We probably it could be from the doctor, but we're not sure of that. However, we do know that Godzilla's breath does hold a lot of force behind it. Probably a little bit more force than most of the other Ultra Monsters during that series have in terms of strength behind their beams. However, with the 1954 Godzilla, we could prob possibly say that his beam has around the same strength as um, Jiris's. We do know that Jiris was shown to blow up a rock, so we do know that he's large boulder level, um, as opposed to Godzilla who was able to blow up um, large buildings. And because of that, um, we do know Godzilla's building level. We know Ultraman's monster level because Ultraman's obviously able to destroy monsters. We do know that Godzilla 2000's beam, his red beam is obviously monster level. He was able to blow up um, Orga with um, pretty much bringing in all his power, as well as also able to blow off pieces of Orga. Godzilla was able to hurt monsters and blast them out of the sky in the case of Gigan and a few other monsters. He wasn't able to topple King Ghidorah, however King Ghidorah weighs a ton more than Godzilla, which I will get into striking force much later guys, please just share me. And a few other monsters, like he was able to knock over Ebra, but Ebra's fodder anyway, so that ain't really nothing. But, we, so, what we can say is that Ultraman, we do not know what is the strongest attack Ultraman can tank with considerably no injury, however we do know that Jiris his beam was strong enough where Ultraman needed to dodge it, as was in Narangas, where they're made up of pretty much the same kind of contents, a large amount of voltage. And we can assume that Godzilla has a stronger beam. We do know this for fact with the Showa Godzilla and the 2000 Godzilla. However, we do not know this with the 1954 Godzilla. And that's that. So with um, abilities, obviously Godzilla has less abilities than Ultraman. Um, taking into account the Ultra Slash, um, do I believe that the Ultra Slash could completely cut Godzilla in half or decapitate him? Quite possibly. I don't believe it could hurt Godzilla 2000 to that effect. Possibly show Godzilla and probably him and the 1954 Godzilla could take excess amounts of damage from it as Godzilla took a bit of damage from just getting hurt from the explosion between him and Mecha Godzilla, which I believe those beams were of considerable power to Ultraman's. And he obviously took damage from blunt force trauma from both Gigan and was able to bleed from Mechagodzilla's Specium Ray. Or <laughs> Mechagodzilla's Specium Ray. Mechagodzilla's Rainbow Eye Beams, yes. So, um, but that also, once again, I said I stated that obviously light is a form of radiation, so could Godzilla absorb that radiation and make himself stronger? We do know that uh, the later incarnations of Godzilla could indeed make themselves stronger by absorbing other types of radiation. We do know that Godzilla went to power plants in certain incarnations to get more power, and obviously he's gained power from electricity. However, Alex said that his beam would be a charged electrical beam. However, we do know that this is composited into pure radiation, and obviously in a plasma form. It is not pure voltage at, like Jiris' beam or Naranga's um, little tentac um, tendril thingies or noggin things. I don't know of what you call those things on the wrongest head. But we do not know whether or not those are the exact same in terms of like their contents as indeed they're probably electricity and plasma. However, it contains radiation and Godzilla is shown to take radiation in and turn it into like the most well volatile form of radiation which is what allows him to get so much gain so much power. And um an example of this that I could say would be similar is this is not this is a somewhat equivalent so it does not completely apply of course is with Superman in the Dark Knight Returns we see Superman try to hold off a nuclear bomb however he gets hit by this bomb and it produces so much force it almost kills him because of that radiation and he needs to go back to the sun to replenish his energy which is kind of interesting as both the bomb and the light are made out of, of radiation so we do not know if Godzilla could absorb the specium ray and turn it into the more volatile form of radiation and throw it back at him and that would hurt Ultraman or um, it just wouldn't do anything it would hurt Godzilla and Godzilla's beam would hurt Ultraman as well 
So, um, going into striking blows, um, both Ultraman Explained and um, Alex Akaiju fans stated that Ultraman would have more striking force as indeed he does way more than um, Godzilla does. And I think this is interesting, I really do want to take this into account, is because there is Zone Fighter. Um, as I already stated, Zone Fighter did fight Godzilla um, in the show of continuity. It's the Godzilla that Zone Fighter fights is the one that does fight Mecha Godzilla. It's around that time period. Um, you'd have to look to Wikizilla to so you can go to where the where Zone Fighter fits within the continuity. However, within the show of continuity, he does indeed fight uh, Zone Fighter. And Zone Fighter has a weight of 55,000 tons next to Ultraman's weight of 35,000 tons. And Godzilla 2000, 25,000 next to Godzilla Showa in 1954, which are 20,000. I find that interesting because when Godzilla is fighting Zone Fighter, he is able to knock Zone Fighter back with a few punches. However, Zone Fighter did knock Godzilla back. And we can say that this is a large weight differentiation, which is quite interesting. Like, Zone Fighter knocked Godzilla and just knocked him on his butt. Like, just he went like a boxer however Godzilla was able to kick a rock which had enough force to knock Zone Fighter onto his back roll over it and throw it back at Godzilla and then Zone Fighter threw it at Godzilla and it made Godzilla hurt a little bit and then Godzilla was fine right afterwards and both the two fighters they went back and back but it was more just sparring between those two fighters however we could see that Zone Fighter was able to knock Godzilla over having a higher considerable weight not to mention he actually is taller than Godzilla Zone Fighter is 62 meters next to Ultraman's 45, so that's something else to take in consideration. As a fighter myself, um, Alex and um, Ultraman Explained both stated that all that goes into it is weight, and people who have the larger weights may be, well, will hit harder. That is true to an extent, however, you also have to take into account the fact of how actions take place, like smacks, as well as kicks, whip kicks, back kicks, front kicks, how the force is distributed and where it goes directly, does matter in this case so i want to take into account the fact that there's two monsters that I, from the ultraman series that i want to look directly at and those are zeton and gomra zeton weighing 30,000 tons he's less than zone fighter and he's shorter than zone fighter because zeton is only 60 meters tall we did see that zone fighter was able to disrupt ultraman's capturing so if ultraman was at first trying to disable the 1954 Godzilla, the Showa Godzilla, or 2000. If Godzilla used his atomic breath, he could most likely disrupt Ultraman's catch rings and then break free of the catch rings as Ultraman would have lost concentration from this. Um, he was also able to ultra, um, overpower Ultraman. He did have a shield tower which allowed him to, uh, to just tank that attack, not directly, and then he fired back at Ultraman and not only choked Ultraman out, but also just knocked him with um, his beam which is also taking into consideration. We should also get to the fact that Alex stated that Godzilla 1954 and Showa would probably just get their necks broken like Red King did. Red King is interesting as he is 45 meters, he's the exact same, as, he's the same height as Ultraman, however, he's also the same weight as Godzilla, which is interesting. Um, this could also go into the fact that if, Godz if he was to flip Godzilla, would the weight distribution take place? As we have seen, we did see that, um, Godzilla 2000 was knocked back with his spines and he was knocked directly backwards and then to the side so could we say that Godzilla has a little bit of a tougher spine as not only was his spine did his spines not break and break his spine too when he got knocked over but we should also take into account that Red King was also not mutated in any sort of way he's just an ancient well, animal in this case as opposed to Godzilla which is mutated to some degree so I don't want to rule out the fact that Godzilla could get his neck broken by Red King, however I think it's very unlikely. This is also similar to the case that Gomera, um, being I believe either 45 meters or 50 meters exactly, he weighs around the same as Godzilla, however he did not get his neck snapped by Ultraman. Ultraman flipped him over pretty much the exact same as Red King did, and that same motion, if done properly, would have broken Gomera's neck, especially because of how Gomera's head is, sh or Gomera's head is shaped. It would have just snapped his neck at that point where Gomer's head tilts and Gomer should have died. However, we do see that Gomer does not die and he's not only able, he breaks his head down and is able to push Ultraman over. And he weighs less than Ultraman, mind you. Um, 
Gomera not only was also able to smack Godzilla or not Godzilla. Ugh, I'm getting my words mixed up. He was also able to smack Ultraman around with his tail and then smack him a few times, then escape. And I think that's also because of the fact that Gomer didn't want to fight in the first place. However, we do see that Ultraman was able to be soundly beaten by a foe that was around the same height and of a lower weight class than he was. So indeed, weight doesn't mean everything in this fight, especially coming from someone like myself. I don't weigh that much and I can... I'm, I have seen fighters around my weight fight fighters of a higher weight and you have to make sure you understand your body and how to place kicks properly. Indeed, Godzilla hasn't doesn't fight like a human completely <laughs> but um he does know his body quite well and uses his tail as well as knocking foes over with the front of his body for maximum weight and effect as indeed ultraman if godzilla lowered his head would probably try to grab his head and if godzilla were to move around ult he could lift godzilla could lift ultraman i can say that for a fact as he's a he's lifting monsters of similar weights so i believe that lifting ultraman wouldn't be that much trouble for any of these godzillas and I think that that's pretty much what I want to cover for like abilities and any kind of misconceptions or anything like that. So um, I'm going to throw out some scenarios. Okay. So if we were to say Godzilla or Godzilla 1954 font the original Ultraman, we are getting rid of story consistencies, story inconsistencies, as well as we are looking at these characters at their what they're supposed to be interpreted as to the people who made them without suit or effects limitations. We would have Godzilla 1954 only with his atomic breath, with his extreme durability and his super regeneration. We would also say this with Ultraman with his Mach 5 flight, his Ultra Slash, Shield, and his catch rings. If we were to say they were to fight in the city, I would say Godzilla would be the aggressor, obviously attacking the city. Godzilla would come in. Ultraman would most likely engage Godzilla directly. He would not use his catch rings to disable Godzilla. I think they would fight for a little bit. I think um, they would be knocking each other into a few buildings. And I think overall, Godzilla would most likely be able to tank most of these attacks. And it would just come down to a fight between these two, two monsters and see how the fight would play out and of course we also need to take into consideration that Ultraman has a three minute time limit. I think the fight would go on and if given the opportunity I think Ultraman would use the Specium Ray. I think Godzilla would be the first to resort to using his atomic breath. I think Ultraman would try to dodge it and I think that he would indeed hit Godzilla with the Specium Ray. Um, once again we do not know whether or not Godzilla could absorb it or not so either A he would absorb or absorb it or he would be killed right there so that would be one win for Ultraman against the 1954 Godzilla if Godzilla absorbed it and kept on advancing I'd say Ultraman would use the Ultra Slash and because once again it's made out of the similar energy we do not know whether or not he whether or not Godzilla could tank it or not so I would say it would cause damage if it did um, even if it did hit Godzilla Similarly to how the Destructo Disc works in Dragon Ball Z, Key Masters can deflect it, however it can still hurt them in some cases. So I could say either it could hurt Godzilla or kill him outright, so that's another one for Ultraman against a 1954 Godzilla. Or in this case, I would say that Ultraman is brought to the brink within his 3 minutes and Godzilla beats him by timing him out. Or is able to beat him into submission and kill him with the atomic breath. So I'd say it's... 2-2 two to two where Ultraman Specium Ray or the Ultra Slash kills Godzilla or Godzilla beats him by timing him out or the Atomic Breath kills him in my in my opinion and then if we're to fight the Showa Godzilla um, I would say everything goes about the same in my opinion and Godzilla it's pretty much gonna go exactly the same way I think this Godzilla would fare a little bit better as obviously this Godzilla is shown to have a little bit of martial arts prowess as shown in the later Showa films so I would say that once again it's a 2-2 it could be anyone's game at this point I'm not sure which one's more likely as again the Specium Ray is the deciding factor of whether or not the beam it, the Specium Ray can be absorbed or not um with Godzilla 2000 Godzilla 2000 I'd say this goes more in Godzilla's favor in my opinion. I think this Godzilla is more willing to kill right away and just fight fight more viciously. Uh, 
my own opinion is because obviously the other Godzilla is more the Show Godzilla is more heroic, so we don't even know if Show Godzilla would fight Ultraman because they're both heroes to begin with. Um, the 54 Godzilla is more animalistic and I think is more instinctual in that case. Well, with this Godzilla, he's more willing to fight directly with other monsters like he does with Orga, how he just charges at Orga and is willing to fight Orga directly. And we do not know if that could be could be applied to 54 as well. However, from what we can examine, that is my analysis. Um, not to mention the fact that um, Ultraman being 45 meters next to 2000 being 55, that is a larger meter difference. So indeed, Ultraman could probably fly around Godzilla. I don't think Godzilla would be confused by it if he was to try to make Godzilla dizzy or anything. I think Godzilla would try to hit Ultraman maybe once or twice. I don't think he'd hit Ultraman. And then Ultraman would come in, probably hit Godzilla, and knock him over a few times. And thinking on the fact is that we do have 2000 who has the, the inner nuclear, like that super powered up attack, which I think that's similar to how um, you see Ultraman powering up in Ultraman Fighting Revolution. I forget the story mission that was on. It does remind me of something similar to what Ultraman did, where he powers up, he's fully in blue with the specimen energy, both his hands to him blue with a unleashes that full specium ray. Of course, Orga's consuming Godzilla, so we don't completely see what that beam looks like at its widest or how far um, it pushes. So we don't know that. And um, thinking another fact, going into the idea of the, ult of the shield that Ultraman has, could Godzilla's tongue breath breach the shield? Um, based on the force that we've seen other monsters within the Ultra Universe display um, next to Godzilla's atomic breath, I'd say 2000s, I can say probably could breach through um, Ultraman Shield. Um, the Showa Godzilla, questionable, could go either way. And with the 1954, if we are to assume that once again, without suit or effects limitations, his breath is t around the same power as the um, Showa Godzilla's, I would say that probably, probably not, we're not sure. However, I think without a doubt, if Ultraman was to raise the Ultra Shield in defense of Godzilla's atomic breath where he couldn't avoid it, we do we do see that Godzilla and other incarnations can keep firing the beam and power it up throughout the burst, similar to, uh, once again, Dragon Ball Z key masters powering up their key even more and making their blast stronger with more propulsion. Um, this comes down, in my opinion, to the idea of shield versus swords versus maces. In this case, I would say Godzilla's atomic breath is the mace, next to Ultraman Specium Ray, which is the sword, and then the Ultra Shield being the shield. And of course, we're saying these are all metal, metal shield, obviously metal sword, and obviously metal mace. With the sword, the sword's not gonna be able to pierce that shield at all. It's gonna have to find a weak point, or you're gonna have to beat down the person with your pommel, murder stroke them, anything to get like to beat and pummel that person into submission before delivering a precise and killing blow, which is what Ultraman is able to do. Next to Godzilla's atomic breath, which is much more forceful. If someone's strong enough or with enough force, God's like a mace could probably dent a shield and hurt a person's hand, knock the shield away, and then you just cave in someone, even in full plate with a mace it may take time it will hurt it will be painful that person will die however so it this comes down to force and if we would hypothetically say that both characters beam clash with each other which beam do i think is more powerful the specium rate or the atomic breath as indeed we see that um ultimate explain did state that the atomic breath for the 1954 godzilla takes time as opposed to the showa godzilla and 2000 to an extent as 2000 could fire it off almost immediately however there is cases where he did charge up however we do not know if that's just for the cinematic effect or not and if godzilla can just do whatever he wants with his breath in that case if they are to clash because of the fact that the specium ray is kind of like a large square and is kind of this condensed kind of energy next to Godzilla, which is much more Claudius. Is that even a word, Claudius? I don't know. And is much bigger within its force. We do not know, once again, Ultraman's force when it comes to killing monsters as his beam does not push monsters away, it just outright kills them. So we don't know if the Specimen Ray could just outright pierce Godzilla's atomic breath. However, I think because they're most likely equal forces and they could beam clash, I believe that is probably less likely and that, if anything, 
the Spassium Ray and the Tomograph cancel each other out, and that is one case, and another case is that the Atomic Breath breaks through the Spassium Ray and hits Ultraman. And once again, going back to the Superman analogy, we do not know if Ultraman um, is affected by radiation at that rate and then that purest form. We do know, of course, that he can tank vaults to a degree. However, Godzilla's um, breath is not completely made out of electricity. It is condensed into radiation. However, it can be powered up by electricity. So they're just adding to the power and probably adding to the force as well because lightning does have force behind it. So, um, my conclusion to all this is that examining them completely unbiasedly, um, no, probably not unbiasedly, I'm kind of biased. <laughs> but, um, taking all things into consideration, I think that in, in any kind of scenario, there are instances where Ultraman can win, there are instances where Godzilla can win, it just comes down to um, better understanding force behind some of the attacks, specifically the beams, and how that would play out, as well as understanding the characteristics and how these people would fight. And if I were to say a winner overall, I could, I'd say that, um, not a draw, but um, Godzilla and Ultraman would both win depending on the situation. And and if someone were to ask me most po um, best possible outcome, um, once again, I cannot fully say because it is determined almost completely upon the forces of certain beams, which would be the deciding factor in any of the situations. So if the atomic breath could pierce the specium ray and overpower it, then I'd say Godzilla would most likely win if landing off the atomic ray. And if the specium ray could cut through the atomic breath, then Godzilla's pretty much got nothing else in most other cases, and Ultraman would probably win. I didn't bring up the nuclear pulse too much because, again, that's not really going to damage Ultraman too much, and it would just probably push him away and allow Godzilla time to get back in there. And that's pretty much it. Um, I think I liked what Alex did, and I liked what Ultraman explained it because they both wanted people to be more engaged about this topic and leave your own suggestions and comments and make video responses, which is what I did. Hey, hey cashing in. So, um, so leave your own response in the comment section below not to mention make your own video response i want to see like someone make a giant playlist of all these videos that people have done giving their own opinions or someone decides hey get a podcast of everyone who gave videos on this and let's talk about it but that's all guys see you